Well, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to be your personal trainer for the next few minutes. Uh, I'd like to start uh, with the tagline that I have <clears throat> on my email. A lot, a lot of people use a short uh, quote to tell something about themselves. And my tagline reads as follows. It's what you do when you don't have to that determines what you'll be when you can no longer help it. That first applied to me in high school when I was a bodybuilder. Um, I have learned through that experience by changing myself physically that through your own initiative you can improve yourself. And that raises the question, can we do this with our intelligence too? Can we work out and increase our intelligence? So what I would like to point out is that first is that for many years science didn't believe we could change our intelligence. Science thought that it was fixed at birth, and that was it. You've made the best of it. But fortunately, about over the past decade, a little longer maybe, uh, research has uh, taken a turn for the better. Uh, we have found, for example, that students who understand how their brain works always perform better than those who don't when they're matched against all of the conditions. Uh, so knowing how your brain works is important. This holds with bodybuilding. No successful bodybuilder exists that doesn't know their, how their body works, what the exercises are intended to accomplish. So we've got to match up so far. Now, the, another thing bodybuilders have that you don't see until you do it is they're always working at their margin of failure. Uh, and this, this is a, a very um, um, discouraging thing in a way, and so they have to make a decision to do the workout when they're supposed to do it, and then just do it. And finally, they need to get some sleep. Well, same thing applies in brain research, and uh, or I mean, from the results of brain research show that we have to make decisions when we're learning, and we have to act on them. And those, as you'll see later, those actions result in emotions, uh, positive or negative. So let's step through this a bit and take a, a closer look. If we take a look at the, this is the left side of the brain, and we're interested in the area of the brain called the cortex where the arrows are pointing. And I've labeled these skill areas for the simple reason that we can grow our intelligence in each one of these areas. So you're going to walk out of here having a whole different idea about what learning skill means. So the sensory skills, if we start a learning cycle, the sensory skills take in what you're hearing, what you're seeing, your senses, and organize that. Uh, many neuroscientists tell you you see with your brain. But then there's more. It's more than just seeing things. You have to recognize them, and that's done by the memory area. Everything on your hard drive, uh, the, the, the part of your brain that houses your long-term memory, contributes to what you're hearing. You're, you're understanding right now, you're asking, your brain is asking, do I recognize uh, what I'm hearing? What part of it do I recognize? What part of it that I'm seeing do I recognize? Most, picture have seen, most people have seen a picture of a brain. So taken together, the back of the brain, which we're talking about so far, constitute a view of the, both the present, what you're taking in, and the past, what you remember. And so far, we could have just been talking about a computer. Pretty much the same thing. Computers help us use the back of our brain better. But what makes us human is the front of our brain. The front of our brain is designed to make decisions. Uh, it, it, we don't have time to get into depth, but it basically does this by creating possibilities, creating a big picture, and predicting possible outcomes, and then making a decision to do one of those, to choose one. And then finally, the brain is designed to act. So that decision is, it leads to an action. Okay, so we have a learning cycle, the outcome of which becomes new input, and the cycle continues. And so we basically never stop learning all day long. Now, 
so let's say we've worked out our brain this way. We've, we've spent some time in a learning cycle. What changes? Is there a comparable change to muscle, actually physical? Muscle fibers grow in size. It turns out brain cells grow in size. They change physically. Now, don't worry, your brain, your head won't blow up by, uh, today. Uh, I'll, explain, I'll explain that there's a balancing mechanism. We'll get to that. But what I want to bring to your attention now is how we grow. Because the brain nerve cells grow differently. Uh, they grow by branching more. Branching is equivalent to increase in intelligence. It's computing power. And this slide that you're looking at now is stained selectively for those branches. They're called dendrites. Uh, it looks like, some, like something you might have pulled out of your garden, weeding your garden. Uh, if you shake the soil off and rinse it off, that the tangle of roots is highly branched. And what we do when we learn is extend and elaborate those branches. And it's hard to believe, but up to 10,000 times 10,000 times. So the brain is able to really branch out and increase its intelligence. Now, the trick is, how do we get this to happen? What makes this happen? Okay, it seems that this all happens during sleep. This is the most fascinating part of the research going on right now in learning. Learning only occurs during sleep. If you experimentally block the growth of dendrites during sleep, you block learning. So that's the same thing for a bodybuilder as blocking the growth of their muscle during sleep. So how does, how does sleep work? Well, there's an interesting interplay here and it helps us understand what we mean by active learning. So let me, let me explain. When we sleep, we go through sleep cycles. And a part of each cycle is deep sleep. It's called, in other terms, slow wave sleep. But what's important about slow wave, and, and by the way, non-dreaming sleep. This is not talking about your dreams. Uh, that's shallow sleep, actually. So when you uh, are in slow wave sleep, your brain replays everything you did the previous day, your experiences. See, right now, you are actually starting little spines on your dendrites. They're starting to grow from all the experience you're having today. And that gives you the illusion you're learning something. Uh, and it is an illusion because if it's not followed by further growth, it goes away. It gets pruned. The decision the brain makes as it replays is to grow those areas connected with emotion. In other words, you learn what you care about. And then it prunes away to make space to keep your head from exploding. It prunes away what you don't care about. So if when you're learning, you don't attach something emotional, it can be humorous, it can be pleasure, but it can also be negative. It can be something you're afraid of or something that threatens you. Uh, all of these had survival value in the early days and still do. So the, the brain then <clears throat> learns by growing dendrites in reacting to emotion. And remember, emotion is a product of action. Therefore, active learning produces permanent learning or long-term learning. So, I'm coming now to the exit ramp, and I want to kind of go back over this to drive home some points by giving you some pointers, some tips. If you want to develop your sensory skills, the research in brain uh, research is showing that mindfulness meditation improves focus and attention. Uh, the uh, memory area of the brain uh, which is actually a problem for big picture learners. Uh, many of you out there recognize that you uh, learn first through a big picture. Well, but you have a lot of trouble with details. So the, the thing to do there is just expand your big picture. If you draw concept maps, draw a bigger concept map. Attach more details and you've solved it. Uh, the front of the brain is hard for people 
that are good with details. They don't spend much time up there. So the way to deal with that is to extend your learning. Go beyond what's told to you and answer questions you derive. What, why, where, when, who. Let Kipling's Six Honest Men guide you, and that will exercise that part of the brain. And then follow that. Follow that by talking to yourself. Talk out loud, like I'm doing. It makes you put things together. Now, if you happen to be at a coffee shop, and somebody at the next table looks over and asks you, what are you doing? Just tell them, I'm working out. <laughs> Thanks for letting me be your personal trainer. <laughs>